Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen. We're still here in the Castellation Sea, uh, just taking it to the uh, Imperial Forces. So, we've made a lot of it, uh, advances against them in our last episode. We got a firm foothold on the major island uh, in the area. And our water units are uh, doing a good job of holding the initial city that we liberated uh, two episodes ago. So, everything is going well. It's just a slow but steady uh, advance toward the uh, enemy's uh, base. So, maybe we might not have to actually uh, fight uh, the boss of this area. We've already recruited some uh, former Imperials to our cause, and uh, maybe if we can somehow uh, convince the leader of this area that, you know, uh, we can stop the war between the humans and the merfolk maybe we can uh get some more uh, folks to join our cause we only have two mermaids right now we can always use more well actually we don't want to have any more not that they're a bad class it's just that uh the thing is uh if you have too too many uh characters then your army gets uh, really tough to to manage and so, we keep it low. Right now, we're mainly just having two of each type of class. And then eventually, uh, we'll end up uh, dismissing uh, the weaker of the class after we have a chance to have them grow. So, overall, uh, your army can consist of uh, 100 total characters. Uh, which is important uh, if you're trying to recruit like uh, special characters. Special characters usually come with... Uh, uh, other, uh, with joining units with them. Uh, so for instance, like, Norn came with those two titans, uh, Asia came with two knights, and, uh, the two mermaids. So, say you have, like, 96 characters in your army, and then you try to get a special character who has, you know, uh, four other characters with them, they won't join you because they can't fit in your army. So, that's another reason to be careful. Uh, so... But, uh, I think I did the math a long time ago, that, uh, if you never do any neutral recruitment, uh, and just get all the game's special characters, you end up with, uh, 96, uh, characters, so, but, uh, most people will be recruiting neutral units, because that's the only way to get, uh, certain units, so, but, well, uh, army's doing pretty nice right now, so, that, uh, hmm, gotta start moving, uh, start moving some of other things, we gotta move, uh, Willie's unit there, uh, block that mermaid off, looks like it's retreating down toward that city that we, uh, unfortunately uncovered, we would have liked to have, uh, not had that city uncovered, because it just gives an extra city for the enemy to try to attack, but... But our land units are definitely showing their uh, worth here, so... Going to show the big units can be pretty, pretty good. So, a lot of people, you know, don't really give uh, big units their, their due. But I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, toward the end, you start getting... Uh, your smaller units start getting uh, three attacks, like big units uh, initially come with. Like, the Golem has three attacks initially, the Titan there has three attacks. Uh, toward the end, uh, like Samurais, uh, Samurai Masters, the upgraded Samurai class, Paladins, the upgraded uh, Knight class, they'll get start getting three attacks too, so the fact that, uh, you know, your large units have three attacks doesn't matter as much. You'd rather have maybe two small units than, uh, with three attacks than one big unit with a small attack, but at the same time, uh, at the same time, uh, big units tend to have a much higher strength growth than uh, than smaller units. So it tries to balance it out in the end. So look, let's see if we can finish off this unit here. Perfect, uh, perfect positioning for our characters. The golem there is on the left-hand side, so he's only going to be punching down that dragon. So. If he was on the right like that Titan, I don't think the Golem has the ability like the Titan to reach across. 
of the entire field. So he probably would he would end up targeting that knight and wouldn't have been able to get him as he tries to retreat. So and of course the witch does not stun the one character we want her to stun. We want that mage character in the back to be stunned. He's the one who's going to deal the, uh, hit all attacks on all our characters, and, well, he must, luckily he wasn't, uh, targeting the weakness of the golem. Golem's weaknesses are fire, so he's probably going after, uh, the, le uh, maybe the leader of the cleric. I'd have to look at their resistances, uh, because he hit with thunder, so, he'll allow our golem to survive a little bit better, take some less damage. Mm-hmm. unit that is poorly constructed, only has four of its available five slots filled, and that Hawkman would be much better in the front row, and the wizard would be much better in the back row. But hey, we'll take what we can, so. But if we can only get uh, some good stuns in there. And there goes the Hawkman, so. Oop. Hello. Still not. Got to have it on the leader there. Took him out pretty bad. Very close. Probably have to. He'll probably end up taking him out next time with the uh, with the doll mages uh, with the doll mages acid attack. Assuming he doesn't try to retreat, there's a city over to the right there that he may want to retreat to. We're gonna swap out our, our uh, land units because uh, the. Uh, the more characters on the left side, uh, and that's where the golem is positioned, so we'll have the golem work on that other wizard in the front row and the hawkman in the back row, keep the leader unit leader alive as long as possible. So, this is unfortunate that we're fighting this unit in the water, but oh god, Valkyrie's there doing some good damage with her uh, bolt attack on the kraken. Eventually, we'll hopefully get our octopus up to Kraken. So, gotta be level 12. So, we'll have to... I know they're getting kind of close. So... But... Ooh, let's see here. Ooh. Oh no, he's gonna fight Orpheus. We don't want Orpheus to fight. Oh well. Well, he may have to. But... He has, uh... Not a lot of attacks, Mr. Orpheus, but... Good thing is, uh, with, uh, we're attacking them, uh, we're getting fought, uh, on the land here, so the, uh, the Kraken loses its, uh, Maelstorm attack, so that helps out a lot. And Orpheus manages to win, despite being outnumbered, and Ping Pong's right back to Willy, and hey, we, uh, I don't, I don't, so, yep, yeah, once again, we'll be fighting on the land. So this is where, uh, hopefully our, uh, cockatrice, yep, it did go after the kraken, after the best. Because you couldn't, you couldn't put it on weak or else we'd hit that mermaid in the front. Couldn't go after leader or strong, because then it would go after the mermaid in the back. So we just had to take our chance and hope that best worked, and it did, so. Fortunately, we missed the kraken on the first hit, but we got it on the second. If we would have got it on the first hit, we might have actually defeated that group. Because it would have uh, saved another uh, attack there for the uh, Kraken. But. And hey, we just got a recent uh, Beastmaster promote. Let's turn it into a Dragon Dragoneer. Dragoneers will continue to be physical classes. They'll just trade their whips for a sword. Uh, two sword attacks in the front, two in the back. Uh, so the problem with Dragoneers is they'll eventually uh, promote into a uh, Dragon Master. But all this time that they've been uh, being raised up as a Dragon, uh, a Beast Man, then a Beast Master, and then a Dragoneer. And uh, those are all strength builds. And the back row of the Dragoneer, uh, his attack is an intelligence based, it's an ice field attack. So he gets the target's attack uh, as a Dragoneer. But a dragon, dragon master. But 
He doesn't really have the good stats for it, so... Well, I think it's time that we take over that city there. The uh, Empire is pretty much on its last legs uh, in this area. We should have uh, no more problem finishing off the remaining uh, units. So we got a good uh, we got a good foothold, and uh, we've taken out most of the units. And it's daytime, and uh, most of our characters tend to fight better in daytime. So we do have a mixture of you know good and evil units. Like this unit is kind of evil. The cockatrice the uh, wild man and the ninja are all uh, going toward evil or uh, the lower uh, evil like alignment but they're fighting in uh, a very uh, wounded unit there so and I think we've done all that we could with that unit we promoted our uh, beast man into the beast master turned him into the dragon near so We'll save some money, send them back to base. As I said, uh, uh, I have a, 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 a notepad with me, uh, pen and paper notepad, that I have uh, written down notes in it, and uh, so I keep track of the enemies as I defeat them. So I cross them out, I have all them listed down, written down, so when I defeat one, I cross it off, and I'm pretty much down to, you know, not, not many left. Uh, I can't tell exactly because I'm looking back at my notes, but as I record, uh, you know, I'm cutting, I'm scratching them out, so. The leader of the Murfolk, Porkless, has been recruited by the Empire. Not that I blame her. We've haunted the Murpeel for a long time now. But I'm sure to the Empire, the Murpeel will just pawns to throw out the rebels. And that may be true, so, but maybe we can convince her. And Porky S is, uh, I guess, the name. I, I was looking down at my notes when that thing popped up, so. May have read a little wrong, but we'll hear more about her in a little bit, so I'm sure other towns and cities will be talking about her temples. So, and once again, our witch misses, and we uh, barely man barely uh, avoid Kano and that front row uh, giant. So, but we'll definitely finish off one of the giants, whether it's the front one or the back one. We have two more hits with our Titan there, and as you can see, he's doing a lot of damage, so this unit will be really hurting next time we fight it. Maybe then, next time, the, uh, the Dawn Mage will finish off the Giant in the front row. Assuming his Acid doesn't miss, and then the Titan can take care of the Mage. Titan hits really, really hard, as you saw. Mages have really poor physical defense. It's their worst resistance, so... Most of these guys, the Octopi, have worse resistance to the Bolt spell there by our Valkyrie. She'll be able to do good damage. Sadly, though, once uh, she's forced to target the Hawkman, not so good. So, Bulk. Just change it to. We could, we could have taken out that front row Octopus, but he only has 13 health and. Do I really want to waste a bolt spell that could do 45 damage to one? So, he'll stay alive. Next battle we fight, the uh, Nixie in the front row will be able to take him out with his, uh, her stab. Assuming that Rex and unit here doesn't finish it off. Let's see if we can get uh, Homo, that Homo made there up to a Nixie. Which is probably really close, because like I said, uh, uh, those both mermaids both joined with uh, Asia in uh, Island Avalon, and uh, so they were both on the same uh, same level when they joined. So they should both be uh, leveling roughly the same time. So because we've been using them for the you know the same time. So and poor Octopus, he could not hit that Eagle Man to finish off the battle. To check our octopi unit units eventually. Then, oh, huh. jumping back over to the land. Now uh, the screen is ping ponging back and forth. Hey, we saw this unit not too long ago, but it's a strong unit. 
not gonna do any better, guys. So we seem to have the enemies on numbers here. Except for our witch, who does not have the number of stunning that mage. I think we've done uh, four battles in a row now, where she's missed stunning the mage. But luckily our uh, shaman has been able to uh, keep up mainly with the damage. And that helps because she's promoted to a shaman, so she now has three uh, uh, healing, uh, three heals per, per uh, battle. And uh, the mage, we're fighting during the day, and of course, mages are evil, so they uh, will fight worse during the day. So we gotta rely on our octopi and our mermaid to finish this guy off, because the Valkyrie is gonna do next to no damage with her thunder. Because the Eagle Man is strong against thunder, being that's his element that he uses. It's like he's, uh, I guess, uh,. You know, since he uses that element, he, you know, he can best deal with it, so. Let's move all our water units up close there. And continue to do our push. And this island looks suspicious. Hmm, big empty island. Remember what uh, one of the first uh, cities we liberated say? What do you mean you can't see all the cities? We know that, uh... He said, uh, we know that, so therefore we know there's a lot of cities around here, we just have to find them. And from previous maps, we know the best place to look is, look for, uh, you know, wide open areas, uh, sudden changes in terrain, like if there's a big forest, then there's all of a sudden an empty slot in the forest, then, you know, that there's, uh, probably something there. Or, at the end of a road, if a road just ends in the middle of nowhere, there's probably something there at that end of that road. So, well, we couldn't get our one flying unit back to the home base before we got uh, our tribute, but eh, that's okay. We'll, uh, we're not hurting for money at all. I think that's now uh, Battle 5. Once again, the witch has failed to stun. So, I don't know, our golem may actually take this uh, wizard out. Or the mage out. They're definitely gonna. So. But. That's why we will retreat. Otherwise, we take the uh, mage out and uh, he'd start retreating. And we may not be able to catch him. Because uh, all units are just plain units. And uh, the wizard will be a plain unit. So. We wouldn't be able to uh, catch him if he was uh, further away from us. So. And he's too, uh, a flying unit would be able to catch him, but all our flying units are occupied. They're, uh, far away on the other side of the map. And the one character we wanted to hit, the mage, we missed again. With both the stun and the acid attack. So, it's funny though, because then when, well, it seems like every time the, the next round, when the mage doesn't have any, uh, attacks, because the mage only gets one back row attack, uh, what ends up happening is then we stun him, so... Only one more level for our uh, doll mage there. Uh, becomes a doll master at level 14, so have to look at its stats. It means that uh, most of these, like I said, most of the uh, enemies in this area are level 11, with uh, leaders being level 12. So he may be taking some hits to his alignment and charisma. How can you usually find hidden towns? Well, the best way is to send a unit to any place that looks suspicious. Well, we've been doing that, so. Since it doesn't matter that uh, Willie's, uh, we're not gonna save any money. We'll just keep him out here for a little bit longer. He might be able to help out uh, with uh, the fighting these units, just in case they manage to sneak past our water units and our one flying unit there. So. Uh, and for the most part, this is the last push of the Empire. Clerics there, level 16, so we'll have, or level 14, so we'll, uh, we'll probably end up, uh, benching some of them, put, start rotating in some of our weaker units. Like somebody once said, uh, from a while ago, it may make battles a little bit harder, but 
It'll help with our reputation, because nobody likes a bully. Nobody likes it when your units are so much stronger and just steamroll the enemy. Even though you're, you know, you're fighting for freedom, you figure that people would want you to take out the Empire as quickly as possible. People like fair play. But this isn't baseball or sports. <laughs> Speaking of baseball, uh, Norfolk Tides, our local minor league team down here, an affiliate of the Baltimore Orioles, they are uh, um, opening up their uh, season. Uh, and once again, I'll have to check it out. And I know for a while with COVID, couldn't get to go. Uh, but now parks should be, you know, open up to the public and got to get our, my dog out there to uh, bark in the park, which is where you buy uh, a ticket. It's only $5, but you get to take your dog to the baseball game. And uh, the money that they raise from selling the tickets for the dogs goes to the Virginia Beach SPCA to help all the little animals there, so that's nice. My dog, he's not really a fan of baseball, but... He enjoys the afternoon sitting on Dad's lap. He's not too much a big fan of other dogs either. Uh, he mainly just likes to hangs out on my lap. So, but he's an old pup, so that's okay. It's funny to see some of the dogs that you can tell are uh, retrievers or like uh, ball, toy balls because uh, you're stationed uh, in the in uh, left field uh, on the sidelines. That's where they have the dogs at. Because uh, there's a gate back there that you can step out real quick to, you know, use the take your dog to use the bathroom uh, by the parking lot. And uh, so sometimes a lot of foul balls get hit down that way, and they'll be rolling on the ground uh, down the uh, the foul line. And you see the dogs, their heads are like following the ball because they're like, oh, and you can tell like if they could, they could, you know, want to jump up onto the field. But the outfield is uh, the seats are a little uh, higher. Uh, so there's a little bit of a wall, you know, for safety, obviously. So, all these units, I guess they're coming this way because they don't like Orpheus. But we have a bodyguard with Orpheus. And both of these units are foolishly giving up their best advantage. The Kraken's uh, Maelstorm attack. So, that should make these battles a little bit easier to win. This one may be a little bit hard, though, to win because uh, this unit is, uh, you know, fully staffed, so they're getting all their attacks in. Where the other uh, unit that's built like this that is also attacking, I believe we defeated the two mermaids in the front row, so that's minus four attacks, so. So potentially, even though they're not, uh, you know, don't have their best offensive unit, the Kraken, using this Maelstorm. Uh, they, they still have a lot of attacks that we'd have to deal with, so. Oh. Well, maybe, yep, very close. Still gotta get to level 11. Yeah, and we jumped over here. I was ignoring the land over here, and hmm, they sent out another unit. Well, no, this unit was out early because uh, we must have uh, defeated that dragon there on the right because it's totally fresh while the knight and the uh, other dragon are weak. So we probably just lost track of this unit and it snuck back to base and regrouped. But it only uh, just temp uh, it just delayed its inevitable defeat. Our giant is really uh, hurting these guys. Or Titan, I should say. He's a, he is in a giant class, but... Don't... So he took out the entire fresh dragon. So that unit's pretty much back probably where it started before it got that fresh unit. And hopefully it doesn't try to go back to the main base and get another new dragon. Otherwise, it'll just be an endless loop of fighting that same dragon over and over and over again. So, should be an easy battle here. Should be able to finish off that octopus, hopefully, before he gets his second attack in. Wouldn't hope that the mermaid would have finished him off. Wasted uh, a lot of good damage there with uh, on just five uh, hit points there. But that's all right. Mr. Octopus came through. I don't even know his name. But we'll see when we try to maybe we try to promote him here. 
Let's see, can we promote him? Nope, but we can't promote our Nixie. I don't know her name either. But that's because uh Orpheus, he's uh he's not good with names. He's just good with uh, battle tactics. So mm-hmm. Let's see here. We got uh two hit all attacks, so two hit all lightnings. Everybody's weak to lightning in this, because of our sorcerer and the ninja has lightning attacks, so we should do some good damage to this uh, unit. So, okay. no. the only thing that's bad is our unit is bad. And that means we're gonna have uh, reduced uh, damage from our attacks because it's uh, it's daytime and that puts a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a penalty on our characters. But time for you to heal up Bison. Probably use him later on for the uh, boss battle. The boss battle is uh, we learned the boss's name on uh, Porkius. Uh, she is a uh, Nixie, so which is the advanced mermaids, but she has a bunch of uh, mermaid uh, uh, mermaids accompanying her unit. So. I know I haven't touched on uh, her unit there, but there it is, it's, it's appeared there. If we clicked on it, we'd see that it's comprised of four mermaids, and then the question mark, and the question mark is uh, Porcius, the, the Nixie, the leader of the mermaids. So, mermaids play a much more important role in uh, tactics over Knights of the, of, uh, uh, Knights of Lotus. So, they play a, uh, very big role in that game, so. But that game takes place basically on a, on an island, so. But, but oh, and of course the island, like everywhere else, there's a big war going on for it. But it's more, I guess, political, and uh, has more uh, religion, uh, religious overtones to it, so. Maybe someday I'll uh, I'll get that game and play it. But the it's not like this game. It's uh, uh the Tactics Ogre was uh, developed. Uh, Tactics Ogre, Let Us Cling Together, and uh, the sequel there, uh, Knights of Lotus. Uh, they were both uh, developed by the group that's more uh, known for the developing the Final Fantasy Tactics series, and that's kind of a, a a tile-based uh, strategy uh, game. So rather than having this like big map where you fight, uh, and then you, you know, you don't control your units, you just set a tactic for your uh, unit and individual characters. In this one, you're kind of fighting on a, a tile, like a checkerboard or a chessboard that has different terrain, and you move individual characters. You have more control over each character uh, in that, but. It's, it's a much slower gameplay because uh, you're moving characters individually uh, one at a time where in this one you know you can move them like multiple units at once and multiple fights at once so that's a nice card temperance we're looking for any card that can boost our reputation so I've heard that the mage Rashidi has deployed several flying units to find the sky islands it seems that all the stories you heard as children were true so, we have learned that the key to finding the Sky Islands is the, uh, the Brunhild Sword. And that's available in a temple in the northwest corner there, a hidden temple. I showed it off, uh, two episodes ago where to find it, but I didn't actually pick up the Brunhild Sword, uh, yet, because I'm, you know, I'm saving that temple for when I come back here to try to raise my reputation. So, by getting, you know, uh, favorable tarot cards. My reputation is probably maybe like in the low 40s. It was down to 40 when we had Deneb, but then, uh, because it had to be 40 to get Deneb. Uh, but we lost, I think, some reputation when you recruit Deneb. So, we're just gaining that back slowly from the cards and liberation here, so. Let's see what card we get. Another moon card. Doesn't really help us. A witch named Mango lives in this town. She's over 150 years old. Really? Mango? I haven't seen her for a while. She's probably somewhere hiding from the fighting. So, hmm, hiding from the fighting. Well, we'll have to come back here. Uh, well, we always come back to uh, each area after we liberate it, but 
We'll ha definitely have to come back to that city. Maybe Mango will reveal herself uh, after we uh, after uh, we end the the major fighting here between the rebellion and the the empire. Of course, the fighting between the merfolk and the humans, though, that probably is going to take a little bit longer to resolve, so. But if Orpheus can do it, he will. He's a, he's a good boy, a good rat, and he's all about unifying people. He's trying to unify the continent here. So. Give all the people their freedom back that they lost from the Empire. We heard a lot about that in uh, the last map, uh, Diaspola. People were wondering, look at all the freedoms he's lost under the Empire. Being able to speak out and get thrown in prison. Can we pull a card? Yes, the Hermit card. That'll be really good against the leader here. That's a lightning elemental and all mermaids weak against lightning. Including the Nixies. So, let's take a look at two cards here. Let me get rid of. We have too many moon cards. Do you know what we humans have been doing to the Merg people? Not only have we ruined the oceans where they live, but we hunted and ate them. Can you believe the things humans do sometimes? You can't blame the Merg people for being upset. I guess not. Hopefully, if we take over the area, we can maybe get a... set up a truce or get the people to sit down with the Merg folk and see that they're not really all that different. You know? They're only 50% different in the lower half. Legs through tails. Mm -hmm. Tails? I'm petting Pops' tail right here, right now. He's liking it. Good old Pops. And once again, gotta get rid of another card. You don't have to use too many cards here. So. This ocean is said to be the location of the final battle in the Ogre Battle Legend. If you want to hear about the Ogre Battle, you should visit the Witch Mango. Well, we tried, but. She's not around right now, but maybe she'll be back uh, in our next episode when we finally finish off this area. Take care. Have a good day. Bye.